These are my 2024 WNBA playoff predictions. Now, the time of this recording is September 18th, so the regular season isn't quite finished yet, but the playoff picture is basically put together already. So I figured I'd do it now, drop it right before the playoffs start so you guys can call me stupid or agree with me or disagree with me or whatever you want to do in the comments down below. But without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, so the matchups as of right now are the New York Liberty versus either the Atlanta Dream, the Washington Mystics, or the Chicago Sky. The Phoenix Mercury versus the Minnesota Lynx. Uh, then we have the Indiana Fever, Caitlin Clark's team, versus the Connecticut Sun. I'm super excited for that series. And then we have the Seattle Storm versus the Las Vegas Aces. Now, the first series, uh, the New York Liberty versus the Dream, the Mystics, or the Sky. It doesn't matter. I don't have much to say about this specific series. It doesn't matter who the second team is. The Liberty is going to sweep whatever team ends up playing against them. One, because the Dream have struggled all year. They're just not a very good team. They have some good players, but I think they're just young, and they got a lot of stuff to figure out. I think they need to move some pieces around, maybe get some vets on the team to see if they can make something happen in the future. But as of right now, I don't see them winning a game against the Liberty. Uh, the Mystics, they do have vets. They have, uh, I believe it's Messamin. I hope I'm saying her name right. She's from overseas. They have Messamin. They have Elena Deladon. They have a solid team. But again, they've also struggled majority of the season. I just don't see them changing much. They may be able to win a game if they play the Liberty. I doubt it. And then the Chicago Sky, Angel Reese, the best rebounder in the league. Well, now, Asia Wilson is the best rebounder in the league right now, but Angel's been out for weeks as well. But Angel Reese, up until her injury, was one of the best rebound was the best rebounder in the league. She's out with an injury. She's out for the rest of the season. Uh, Camila Cardosa has been playing very well. She's upped her defense. She's been getting more touches, but she's a rookie. Uh... Kennedy Carter, Kennedy Carter, she's been playing well. They've been playing decent, but they've also kind of struggled throughout the season, even with Andrew Reese out there. I don't see them winning a game, again, similar to the Dream. They're a very young team. They're not winning a game. They're, they're going to end up getting swept as well. So I got the Liberty winning 2-0 uh, against any of those teams, maybe 2-1 if it happens to be the Mystics. Um <clears throat> The next series is the Phoenix Mercury versus the Minnesota Lynx. Minnesota has been playing extremely well all season, but I can't, I just can't go against Diana Taurasi, or I I can't doubt Diana Taurasi. You know what I mean? She's you could argue she has a big argument for being the goat if she if she isn't the goat already. Uh, Brittany Griner has, is just one of the best defensive players and one of the best bigs, not just in the league today, but in WNBA history. Um, they have Sophie Cunningham, again, a vet, one of the best shooters in the league. And I love her TikToks too, but that's, that has nothing to do with basketball. Um, <laughs> they got, yeah, they got a, they got a solid team, but I, I give the Lynx the edge. Nafisa Collier has been playing amazing. Um, uh, Kayla McBride has been playing amazing. I think it's their time to take that next step. Uh, they remind me a lot of that Lynx team that Maya Moore was leading to championships. I know that might be a little, little crazy, but as far as talent, they remind me of that team a lot, and they play really hard. So I think they end up winning that series. The Lynx end up winning that series 2-1. I think DT w Wills... Uh, the Mercury to one game at least, but I feel like they ultimately lose the series and the Lynx end up going on to the next round. Um, now, this this series I'm most excited about, and it's a first-round matchup, uh, the Indiana Fever versus the Connecticut Sun. Now, this, this got a little bit of lore to it, right? So in Caitlin Clark's first-ever WNBA game, she played against the Connecticut Sun. And the game was heated. You know, Caitlin played decent. She got a lot of turnovers, but DJ Carrington really got into her paws. 
Leading a character really worked her. Pause. Fuck. <laughs> Damn. She she really gave her a run for her money. There we go. Um, and really proved herself to be an elite defender. Um, Dewana Bonner played amazing basketball. She's just she's just amazing. And then uh, Alyssa Thomas, you know what she's going to do. And they've really elevated themselves as one of the best teams in the league. And that kind of surprised, well, not surprised me. Because they've always been a top three team in the league to me. But they, I never really looked at them as contenders. Like when Vegas went on, they started going on their run and the Liberty became a super team. I just assumed it would be Vegas and the Liberty every single time. And I didn't think anybody could really challenge that. But the Sun this year have really kind of made me nervous. They made me nervous, and I look at them as favorites. I think they legitimately have a chance to upset a Vegas or a Liberty or or even a Minnesota Lynx team. But that's not the lore. I'm sorry. I, I went on a tangent for a second. Back to the lore. Dijon Carrington and uh, Nalissa Smith are dating in real life. I believe they broke up for a minute there, but they got back together, which is beautiful. But that that's going to be a crazy little thing there because two, you know, two people in a relationship playing against each other in a playoff series, that's got to be intense. I think that takes the intensity level to a whole nother level than it already is. Um, I think Caitlin Clark and Dijon Carrington got a little bit of a beef going on there. Uh, I think... Indiana has beaten the Sun the last couple of times, or at least the last time they played, I believe they beat them. And, you know, Indiana was talking a little bit, being the young team and succumbing that. I believe they were talking a little bit. And I don't think the Sun liked that very much. Um, <laughs> they also have had some back and forth on Twitter. Like, I think somebody said something along the lines of Caitlin Clark was going to break the assist record this year. Dijon A. Carrington said something along the lines of, stop playing with me, that's not going to happen. And then she did, and then Caitlin Clark did break that assist record, and that those tweets, that series of tweets resurfaced recently. So that's another little spat going on there. And then a huge thing, Indiana, since the All-Star break, has been playing amazing basketball. Caitlin Clark has been hitting on all cylinders. Her turnovers are, have went down and everything else has went up. Uh, Kelsey Mitchell was unlocked. I feel like she was hindered a little bit when Caitlin first got there because they were just trying to figure out what her role was going to be with Caitlin there. And I feel like they figured it out. And she's been going crazy, like 20-point games, 25-point games. I think she had a 30-point game a couple times there as well since the All-Star break. Um Lexi Hall, who's my favorite. I fucking love Lexi Hall because she's a dog. She's a 3 and D girl through and through. She plays defense and she shoots threes. And when and when she's on the defensive end, she's going to make you work for it. Like, she she doesn't take any plays off, and I love that. And she, since the All-Star break, she's been in the starting lineup, and she's been playing extremely well. I'm a huge Lexi Hall fan because I love players like that. She don't ask for touches, she don't complain, she go out there, she gets stops, she stand in the corner, and she knock her threes down. And that's all you can ask from her. And then, who I think is probably most important in this series and just for Indiana going forward is Aaliyah Boston. I have historically called Aaliyah Boston the Tim Duncan of the WNBA or of women's basketball. Because she just reminds me a lot of Tim Duncan. She reminds me of a San Antonio Spur of old, obviously maybe not now, but of, of the past. Because she's just no nonsense. She's a great rebounder, a great defender, post game, can shoot the midi, can shoot the three a little bit. She's a great teammate. Every time Caitlin is getting riled up or getting upset or maybe losing her composure a little bit, she's the first person to say, hey, we're all good. Let's figure it out. Let's talk about this. Hey, give me a hug. Hey, let's talk. Let's figure this out. She's the first person to her every time. And to her other teammates as well. And I think that's beautiful. And I think they're creating a culture at Indiana that's very that's very much a semblance of the Spurs. That's very much a semblance of the Golden State Warriors. 
And I think that's just going to be beautiful for, them, beautiful for them going forward. Now, I don't think they win a championship this year. I don't think it would be impossible for them to do it because they've been playing so well since the All-Star break, and, and that's a perfect time to turn it up. But at the end of the day, I think they're just too young. I think they got a lot of time to work on some things, maybe add some more vets onto the team. I think within the next couple of years, they'll be real contenders. But and all that to say, I think they lose this series uh, 2-1. I think they definitely get a game, but I think the Sun, they're just vets. They've been doing this for a long time. Dewana Bonner has been playing for a long time. Alyssa, DJ Carrington is a little younger, but she's been in the league for like three to five years or something like that. I don't think they let the young the young ladies take it from them this year. At least, at least not this year. Now, next year, the year after that, who knows? But for right now, I think the Suns send them home, and we'll see what happens next year. And for the next series, it is the Seattle Storm versus the Las Vegas Aces. The Las Vegas Aces are my favorites. I know I'm kind of foreshadowing the end of the video, but they, they're my favorites. They've been my favorites since last season. Um, since last season ended, I think I did a video about them repeating again or winning another championship. Um, no disrespect to the Storm. They have Gabby Williams, uh, or they just added Gabby Williams. They have Aneka Ngumake, uh Skyler Diggins-Smith. I did a video about them potentially being a super team, but I don't think they beat Vegas. I think Vegas have found their stride, which is, again, the end of the season going into the playoffs is the perfect time to find your stride. And I think it's just a timing issue for Seattle. I think next year they'll be a very uh, strong contender. They were a strong contender this year. But I think just winding up playing against Vegas is rough to start. Maybe if they ended up playing against Minnesota or Indiana or something like that, maybe it would have been a little bit easier for them to get by. But you're playing against the defending champs in the first round. You, you're probably not going to be able to make it happen. Even though they haven't been playing well, they've turned it up lately. Asia and, Asia and the crew are going to get them out of there. I think the series ends 2-1. I think um, Seattle has a chance to win a game. But win the series, probably not. I, I don't see the Aces get knocked out in the first round. Um, <clears throat> but going on to the semis, uh, the matchups based on my picks – will end up being the Liberty versus the Lynx and the Connecticut Sun versus the Las Vegas Aces. And these these games, these series will be best of five and so will the finals. Um, so Liberty versus the Lynx. As I said earlier, the Lynx, the Lynx have been playing amazing basketball. I really like their team. But I think the Liberty will just be too much for them in a series. Um, cause you gotta stop Stewie, you gotta stop Sabrina, you gotta stop John Kell Jones. Uh, oh, I forgot. Uh, I think, I think it's Courtney Vandersloot. I, I, I hope I'm, I hope I'm saying this right. Vandersloot is there. You can't leave her open. And I think that's just going to be tough for Minnesota to maintain defending. And I think that's why they end up losing the series. I, I have the series going three, one, it could potentially go three, two. But at the end of the day, the Liberty win the series. Um, the next series, similar, a little bit similar to the Lynx and Liberty series. I got Vegas versus the Connecticut Sun. I really like the Sun. And I think they have a chance to do it, to beat Vegas. I wouldn't, I don't think it's impossible for them to beat Vegas. I just don't see it happening. You know, again, Vegas has turned it up since the since the beginning of September. They don't seem like they're slowing down. Uh, Asia just seems like she's just getting better every single day and breaking a new record every every single day. Uh, hopefully, Kelsey, Chelsea, and Jackie turn it up a little bit more, so it's not all on Asia. And I just think they end up winning that series. Now that series is definitely going uh, to Game Five. I think uh, Vegas ends up winning the series 3-2. But it's definitely going five games. It's going to be a hell of a series. I wouldn't be surprised if if Connecticut does win it and, like, sneaks one out. 
but I just doubt it. So I got Vegas going on to the finals against Liberty. And then the WNBA finals, you got the Las Vegas Aces versus New York Liberty, a rematch of last year, and I think it's, it ends up being the same. I think the Aces win the championship. Um, I'm, I'm an Aces guy. I love Asia Wilson. I love Kelsey Plum. I think Chelsea Gray is an underrated guard. Um, Jackie Young reminds me of like a... How can I explain it? She reminds me of a San Antonio Spur, which is funny because the Vegas... The Aces used to be the Silver, which used to be a team in San Antonio that was directly linked to the Spurs. I think they still are linked to the Spurs, so that's a funny comparison. And Becky Hammond played for the Silver and uh, was an assistant coach on the Spurs. It's it's a whole bunch of connections there with that. But Jackie Young reminds me of a no-nonsense superstar um, I'm going to come in, do my job, play defense, score, do what I need to do. She don't talk too much. She just plays her game, and she just calls it a day, and I love that about her. But hopefully those three can turn it up, as I said, help age out a little bit more, and they can get it done. Uh, again, this is another situation that I wouldn't be surprised if the Liberty won it because, I mean, Brianna Stewart is fucking amazing. John Kell Jones is a former MVP. Uh, you got Sabrina Nescu, who, besides Caitlin Clark, is like the female Steph Curry. K- uh, Courtney Vandersloot, a shooter. <laughs> Can't go wrong with her. Uh, and they just have a solid team around them besides them. So, again, and they're also just equally a super team. So, it could go either way. I have it going 3-2. But I'm going with the Aces. Hopefully, I'm right. Uh, but the Liberty definitely have a chance. Like, this isn't. I'm not 110% on this. I'm like 50. I'm, I'm 51 49 on the Aces beating the Liberty in the finals. But let me know what you think in the comments down below on my picks. Do you think I was wrong somewhere? Who do you think will end up winning the championship? Uh, do you think Minnesota will do it? Do you think Indiana will do it? Uh, Connecticut? Uh, let me know what you think of some of the individual matchups that I had. Was I wrong earlier? Uh, was I wrong halfway through? Am I just all the way wrong? Um, or do you agree with me? Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, let me know any other videos or any other basketball-related videos you'd like to hear my opinion about uh, or music or anything. We It's Plax TV. We do almost anything on here. Just, you know, well, <laughs> not anything. We do a lot of things here on Plax TV. But uh, make sure you head on over to RP Entertainment. You, if you want to hear about, you know, nerd stuff, anime, TV shows, cartoons, anything like that, head on over to RMP Entertainment. You won't be disappointed. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe, make sure you ding that notification bell so you know every time I drop a video. And most of all, YouTube. I love you guys. Peace out. It's the three on Plex TV.